Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Look, I'm gonna get out of the way. I'm sorry, it's been a minute if you're watching these as they come out. A lot going on. However, we're back. Uh, we'll try to re resume regularly scheduled programming. Look, I'll be real. The fucking, like, th the upload days are like a meme, right? Like, it's like a joke at this point. It, oh, I, yeah, I'd, I'd say like, oh, it's on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. In reality, I upload when I fucking feel like it. And then when I feel like it, it's gonna be on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. Like, we all, we all know. Let's be real here. December 27th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number three. It's also, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't do my due diligence and rewatch anything. I think I've got a decent memory for what the fuck's going on, but we'll, we'll find out. We're gonna find out. Oh, I forgot. I gotta, I gotta voice Von Karma, dude. Jesus, this fucking guy. <clears throat> Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, your honor. So, you know what? I was like, I have to voice him. I forgot. Motherfucker doesn't say anything for these bits. It's so nice. I just, I just hang out. <laughs> Very well. Apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Er, very well. Uh, no opening statements. So... <laughs> Not so fast, judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. R right, of course. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Oh my god. Yo, he's he's pointing at the stands. Look at him go. He's <laughs> he's calling his shot. I got mad respect for that. Oh, they love it. They're eating it up. Those guys are me up there. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? You don't have to object, my guy. Oh, much to question everything. It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. Right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Oh fuck, I forgot about you. <laughs> witness, state your profession. So real, buddy. I am the proprietor of the restaurant The Wet Noodle at Gord Lake. And I also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Er, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. Yeah, yeah raise an objection. No, no, no. Objection. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Objection. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah. I've predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Ooh, little picker way. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. Yeah, right. The witness will not will state his name. <laughs> well, uh. I'm not really sure, yup. What do you mean? My, uh, memory. Your honor, the witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place only three days ago. He can testify. Hmm. Very well. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness. We, we, we 
mean, shit, we're just gonna let that slide? The dude doesn't have any ID? He doesn't have a driver's license or anything? What the, what the fuck you mean that's fine? This guy could be anyone. <laughs> it was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yup. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. And I heard a bang. Yup. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just a floating on the lake. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. Hmm. Very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. Not so fast, I ignore the rules. <laughs> there is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up. You know what? I'm real sick of you, guy. How about this? I'm gonna just start making up the fucking rules. Uh, I feel like that there's no need for you to call witnesses. Therefore, you wasted my three minutes, Von Karma, by even calling this bozo to the stand who you won't even fucking name. I'm so over this. Get out of here with this shit. <laughs> Judge your verdict now. Uh, yes. Mr. Wright. <laughs> you know what? I've decided I don't want to cross-examine. I'm not feeling it. <laughs> what are you saying? Oh, of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Mm. Very well. You may begin. Ah! Oh my god, he lost it. Holy shit. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. <laughs> the night of the murder. Yo, he went, he fucking lost it, dude. Alright, I was at... <laughs> it was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Just after midnight, you say? Yep, just around then. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yep. When I talked to you yesterday, you were rather vague about the time. I'm surprised you seem so sure about it today. Okay. <laughs> I asked him and he remembered. Isn't that right? Don't glare at me like that. I, uh, I remembered it. Clearly I did. Yup. You see, continue. I was in the restaurant where I uh, rent boats as usual. I fucking love this guy. I'm not gonna lie. He's really grown on me. <laughs> Is there anyone who can verify that? Well, I guess Polly could. That's not good enough for a court of law. Mr. Wright, exactly what's not good enough? Uh, your honor, this Polly is a parrot. A parrot? Don't be so hard on the girl, Keithy boy. Keith? The prosecution concedes that we cannot prove the witness was in the shop. <laughs> This shit ain't worth it. It's not a it's not a battle we can take, alright? Like it's just <laughs> Witness, please continue. Then I heard a bang. And where did the bang seem to come from? From the lake, I figure. Are you certain? I up. Good. Continue. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just floating on the lake. Was there someone in the boat? It was pretty far out there. I couldn't see clearly. 
but I figure there was two men out there. Yup. But you couldn't see them clearly. Yup. At the time, that is. At the time? Then I heard another bang. Oh no! <laughs> I need to I need to question this. So you heard two gunshots total. No, no, Phoenix, you're fucking up here. He did not hear two gunshots. Very, very important distinction here. He heard two bangs. Those bangs could be anything. Like, who knows? They could literally be anything. Who's to say that they were gunshots? I, uh... That's what Lada said in her testimony yesterday. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore and a man walks by my window. By your window? Yep, by my window. Right outside the window of my little shack. And could you see the man's face? Well, the fog was pretty darn thick, but he was right there in front of me. I saw him. This is a rather important detail. Please add it to your testimony. Tisk, 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 tisk. What do you want? A really deep, really deep vocalization of tisk, tisk, tisk. I have a bad feeling about this. That man was the defendant. He was saying, I can't believe he's dead. What an insane fucking addition. Literally just... <laughs> Oh, by the way, Your Honor, uh, I forgot to add in my testimony. I did indeed see that man walking away from the boat, uh, covered in blood, literal smoking gun in hand, walking away, muttering something strange to himself. Oh, well, what was he saying? I, I didn't hear clearly, but it was something along the lines of, wow, I can't believe I shot and killed that man. I cannot believe that I pointed this gun in my hand Pulled the trigger and shot him dead. That man right there. Like, what is, what is this? Nobody says this. This is so fucking weird. Are you sure? Uh-oh. Dad! Dead certain, Keith. He said, I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by too. Witness, are you sure the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. Oh my God, he fell over. Yo, is he okay? This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I'd better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Uh, we raise an objection. objection. Your Honor. We proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Yeah, we're, se we're seeming to forget that detail. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun? And that in the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly. That is easily explainable. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. This is... This is so fucking stupid. What? If he wiped his prints from the gun... So if we're gonna assume that Edgeworth killed the man with the gun, shot it with his left hand, we have photo evidence of the, of the killer shooting the other guy with, with his left hand, and then Edgeworth then wiped the prints off of the gun, 
and then proceeds why why the fuck would he then leave his right hand prints on the gun why wouldn't he wipe those off too or take precautions to to why would there be any of his prints on the gun if he wiped them <laughs> hmm the judge is lost in thought what should i do we, we gotta fight this this is bullshit your honor the witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead. But his word is all we have. If he were telling a lie... Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Which is why I have literally none and am relying on this man's vague assertions. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, show us proof. Ugh. Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? <sighs> to be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you! Tisk tisk tisk. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This must be a new record. Enough! The witness may leave the stand. This court seems sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant. This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What? No! Hmm. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Guilty! I knew it! <laughs> the accused will surrender to the court immediately to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. That is all. This court is adjourned. Is that it? I lost? Oh, wait! <laughs> Who was that just now? Me! <laughs> huh? What? Yo, let's go Larry! My boy! <laughs> L Larry? What are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me. I... I was... I was there in the park on the night of the murder. I... I wasn't sure about it until just yesterday. But t today I remembered it. Remembered what? The gunshot. I heard it too. O order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. So, you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot that night. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony, and then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's, it's just not right. I'll testify. Let me testify. <laughs> he just jumped onto the stand. What a dude. Order, order. Well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick. This is it! Larry's given us one final chance at this! And she's right! If only it wasn't Larry! What do you mean? Larry's great! <laughs> you could make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared guilty, Nick! It doesn't get any worse! You're right. Okay. Your Honor! If there is another witness, it is our duty to hear him speak! Right here, right now. A waste of time. 
The verdict cannot be overturned. Mm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. He can just do that. He can be like, anyway, just kidding. It was just a joke. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for a five minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Yo, let's go! My boy Larry! December 27th, 1028 AM, District Court Defendant Lobby number two. Whew. That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. <laughs> I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yes. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that flew into the lake. Oh, right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night. Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth. Huh? You say something, right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It's nothing. Huh? Um, Mr. Edgeworth? There's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. I love this so much. The animation is so goofy. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah? This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials? Perfectly prepared witnesses. Er, well, perfectly prepared witnesses, perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't even talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick! No 10 minute trial this time! We'll milk this one for all it's worth! Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15! Everything's on Larry now. December 27th, 10.35 a.m. District Court, courtroom number three. Bro, is he wearing socks? Is he not wearing shoes? Hold on, I need to get another look at Larry there. It looked like he was just wearing socks and no shoes. Court is now back in session. Witness, please testify to the court about everything you saw on the night of December 24th. Right, leave it to me. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. The night of the murder. That night, I was out in a boat on the lake. I was looking for something and I uh, found it. 
So I quietly slipped the bloat, the boat, the bloat, black into the brand old, brand old bl d stop block. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's try that one again. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. <laughs> I love that he acknowledges it, where it's like, man, no one fucking says anything. <laughs> In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I press him. I'm a little scared. Hmm. Well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. Okay, night of the murder. Um, now, I'm wondering, it, he says he's a little worried about what he's gonna say if we press him. Does that mean if I press everything, I'm gonna get fucked? Like, who knows? I suppose one really way, easy way to avoid this is I just uh, save right here, and then we'll find out. <laughs> All right, that night he was out on the, out on the lake on a boat. Y you know it is. Something wrong, Mr. Wright. There were so many things wrong. I don't know where to begin. Ah. Um, well, okay. First of all, what time was it? Oh, it was after 11 when I went out on the boat. Mm, by that time, everyone had gone home for the night. So I waited until the coast was clear, so to speak. And why were you out on a boat at such a late hour? I was looking for something and I found it. Looking for something? Uh, yeah. Mr. Butts, what was it you were looking for? What the witness was searching for is irrelevant. Most likely he was hunting for this Gordy. That's surprisingly close to the truth, in a sense. This is all irrelevant. Let's get it over with. So I quietly slipped the... I almost did it again, holy shit. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. Around what time was that? Uh, well, let's see. I figure I was out searching for about an hour. I guess it was around 12, yeah? You're not sure? Hey, don't give me that face. I'm not some sort of human sundial, okay? People use watches these days, Larry. Then, just as I was thinking about going home, I heard this bang. Where did the sound come from? Yeah, well, I wasn't too sure about that. I looked around, you know. Did you look at the lake? Yeah, I looked. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. Wasn't there a boat on the lake? Order! Order! Well, Mr. Butts. Whoa! Whoa! Everybody just calm down, okay? I mean, it was real foggy that night. I'm not sure whether there was a boat out there or not. Oh, okay. No problem. That's just the most important part of this case, Larry! So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. So you only heard one bang, correct? Yeah. Huh. Well, Nick? Hmm. It was a pretty wishy-washy testimony, wasn't it? I guess I should just start working on the contradictions. Sorry. I wish I could be more helpful. I wish I could call my sister. That night, okay, so... That night he was out on the boat in the lake, looking for something, and he found it. Uh, he heard this bang, looked out of the lake, didn't see a boat. After I heard that single gunshot, he went home. Do we have anything to prove there were multiple gunshots? Like... 
Why is the... Why do I still have the fucking metal detector? Hello? The fuck's up with that? What? I'm not confident about this. Yeah. It, okay. Because it was fired three times! It's gonna be relevant at some point! Please, give me this! Damn. After he heard that single gunshot, he went home. Hmm. The lake photo was taken at 12.15. Shows an empty lake taken automatically at 11.50 p.m. Huh. Does that disprove? Because he said, well, he said it took him about an hour. Which, like, I mean, 50 minutes is about an hour, I, I suppose. Overhead map, the bullet, the gun. Oh! Lada's deposition heard two sounds. There we go, duh. <laughs> Wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang. Are you sure? Or, well, you're sure. That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness, see? I'm like a customer here. So, you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? <laughs> Fucking thinking face, dude. Um... Well, to tell you the truth, I'm not sure. Uh... Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well... I, uh... I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, uh, listening to something else. Something... else? My radio, dude! With my headphones! What? Order! Order! And stop that booing! <laughs> Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones. Yeah, so what? Is that that's a crime? I listen to my radio, everyone listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Uh, Mr. Von Karma, your opinion. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Oh, God, man. It, surely Larry's got something for me. I, well, hear me out. I'm a little worried about it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a little concerned. I think we should get somewhere with it. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. Bah. Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. Right, leave it to me. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this, believe me. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. And that's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real boom and loud like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume? Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drum beat from the radio. Hmm, true enough. It is difficult to believe is this testimony. 
Wait, your honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me, DJ? An announcer, the guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs, so he could have heard the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, your honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. Can't believe I'm continuing this charade. Oh, Larry. Lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. Hold it! <laughs> so, you turned on the radio? Right! I just wanted to hear someone's voice, you know? You don't know what it's like out there alone on Christmas Eve. Alone! I shouldn't have said anything. That's why I was listening to an all-request show on the radio, see? Do you, by any chance, remember the name of the program you were listening to? This has nothing to do with the case, your honor. Objection sustained. The witness was listening to the radio. That is all we need to know. Tell us, Mr. Butts, how loud was your radio set to that night? I was listening to it real booming loud, like. Real booming loud? Yeah, you know. And you had headphones on. Yep. I wouldn't think you could hear anything going on outside at all. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I mean, gunshots are really fucking loud. They're like really loud. Can you prove that? No, no, of course you can't. Nah, I can't prove it, but I remember that moment real clear. I mean, while I was talking about it, it came back real clear to me, you know? I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. What was he saying? <laughs> what, or she, I guess. Oh, my bad. What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what the radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. We should care, because what if the radio is like, Man, I can't believe that I killed that man. I pointed a gun at him and shot him dead. And that's what, what the mysterious hobo heard. He's not a hobo, he has a home, but you know what I mean. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh... Well, how do you know if we don't ask, huh? Fine. Very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, Hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. Are you sure? Of course I am. She had this real sexy voice. Hmm. Maybe Von Karma was right. I'm not sure how that helped us at all. This is the most ludicrous testimony I've ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. What, there is? Uh, okay, well, we've done all the pressing we can. That's why he was listening to the radio. Listen to it loud. Uh, he's sure he heard the gunshot. Remember what the DJ was saying. What? Am I stupid? There's, uh, there's nothing to contradict here. All requests show on the radio. <sighs> Listening to it booming loud? There, like, there's no way, right? I've got nothing. Man, I don't know. I know you were listening to the radio real loud, but here's a picture of Misty Faye. <laughs> here's my contradiction. Uh. Lada's deposition is just about the two gunshots. Man. Well, you see, Your Honor, he couldn't have been listening to it loud because here's this metal detector. Uh. Bro, I got no fucking clue. Huh.
take some time on the 24th or 25th. Shop from approximately one meter away. Automatically on the 25th at 12.15 a.m. What? I'm sure I heard that gunshot. It's got to be this last bit that's relevant. Otherwise, why would we have to, like, go through a dialogue prompt for this one if I didn't have to do something with this, right? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard the gunshot. What the fuck? Set to take pictures when loud noises are detected faces the lake. I don't think that's relevant. Time of death sometime the 24th to 25th. Shot from approximately one meter away. Taken automatically on 12.25 at 12.15 a.m. Chosen an empty lake. Taken automatically at 12.24 at 11.50. This shit's weird to me. Why is there an empty lake here? And then 20 minutes later, there's the photo of these guys out there getting, getting blasted. Like, I guess there's enough time to boat out there, I suppose. Or lake. Bullet gone let, okay let I'm gonna, I'm gonna simplify this i'm gonna rule out the things that are absolutely no not even the slightest shadow of a doubt relevant all right the badge no way it's relevant is there any world where the camera is relevant here i don't think so the autopsy report maybe like it's got the dates i guess the photo maybe the other photo maybe misty fay is not important gordy is not important i don't think the overhead map is important the bullet, maybe. The gun, maybe. Lada's deposition is not important. The metal detector is not important. Polly's not important. Okay, let me rephrase that. Polly's important to me, but not important to this statement right now, all right? <laughs> DL6 incident, not important, and this is not important. I don't think anything on this page is important. I think the bullet and gun are not what we're looking for here. So what does that leave us? That leaves us with the photos in the autopsy report. If he, hold on, hold on a second. If the DJ said it's almost Christmas and the gunshot happened, this is the 25th. Objection. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. That's so stupid. This is actually the dumbest shit ever, but like, it's true, the time doesn't add up. I don't know what that does for me. I'm gonna be real, I have no clue how that helps me, but we're here. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easy. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your honor. Did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ, no, this is Phoenix, God bless. The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard the gunshot. Indeed. And almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. <laughs> That's so true. That is so real. Almost Christmas does mean it wasn't Christmas. <laughs> Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard the gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see what the time of the photo, what the time, what, oh my God, I'm so bad at reading now. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. 12.25.00.15. 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Even though it's ridiculous. Look at his socks, I'm telling you. Order. Order. What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Because there were three fucking gunshots! The gun was fired three times! I've been going over this forever! I Look, I remember that detail very vividly. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. 
Just look at him. Suspicious. What? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Butt's claim he heard the gunshot before midnight? Larry's right! He's the only thing I got right now. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. The gun! Take that, loser! This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. The third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order! Order! Hmm... I guess that would make sense out of yesterday's testimonies. Bah! You waste our time again with your empty statements. Yes, the pistol was fired three times. But do you have any proof that it was fired before midnight? Do you have proof that the witness didn't just think he heard something? I do! Indeed. Well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. Do you have evidence that proves there was a gunshot before midnight? Do you have evidence that proves Mr. Butts wasn't just hearing things? The empty photo! Because the camera takes pictures whenever there are loud noises! Look at this photograph! <laughs> Every time I do it, it makes me laugh. <laughs> this was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh, yeah? Hmm, but there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph, it's why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct! There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That is why this photograph was taken. In other words, there was a gunshot at the time that Larry claims. Order! Order! Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However... This leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots, separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I'd better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah! <laughs> What's with everyone screaming this trial, dude? What's wrong, Nick? I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya! Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Right! I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. Hold on, I gotta take a sip of water. We're getting intense. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? 
Tisk, tisk, tisk. So, you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Miles Edgeworth himself. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't have been suicide. Well... The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence of the time of the shooting. The timestamp on the photo says 0015, whatever, right? Midnight, 15 minutes after midnight. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Uh... That's a really good question. Edgeworth and Hammond? I don't think... Hmm. Oh, it's... Hmm. So, it, are we saying that Hammond shot himself, then went out on the boat with... With Edgeworth? shot at Edgeworth but missed him and then fell off the boat and died? Is that is that what we're going with here? I'm gonna be real. I'm not confident here. I have no fucking clue. Uh, hey, it's uh, Edgeworth and Hammond. Miles Edgeworth and Robert Hammond. Yes, I believe you are mad. That is exactly what I've been telling the court this whole time. You're agreeing with me. And yet, what did you just say? That Robert Hammond had been killed 25 minutes before the shot on the boat? Yes, that's what I said! I was just testing you, Von Karma. Mr. Wright, your client has already been declared guilty once. I'm going to have to penalize you for this foolishness. No! <laughs> uh, I'll ask you again. Explain who the two men on the boat are. Well, it's gotta be Edgeworth and the murderer then, right? But I think Hammond is the murderer. He just wasn't dead then. Of course it was Edgeworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense. He hadn't seen the guy in how many years? And, you know, he was a kid when he last saw him. He'd probably look totally different even from what he remembered. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. Mr. Wright. Tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Right. It's... <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> it's not Miles. I don't think it's Lada. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know. Bah. Again, you waste my time. 
I don't know because he never told us. Oh shit, it was the old man. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. The caretaker of the boat shop. Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? Man, fuck if I know. Show the judge where the murder really took place. Uh. Well, in his boat rental shop? It couldn't have been out where Lotta was at. I guess it theoretically could have been like down here. Obviously. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he could meet. That way he could meet with the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. <laughs> Look at him moving around out there. <laughs> That night he was out on the lake and he was out on the lake in a boat searching for something. I'm so sorry, my reading has been so bad. I'm clearly out of practice from this time off. He finds it and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, your er, he heard a gunshot, your honor. Even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. <laughs> Mr. Wright. What happened that night on Gord Lake? Please, tell the court from the beginning. Yes, your honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. Oh my god, look at him! Look at this image! Right in front of Polly, no! This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then, who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? The boat shop caretaker, duh. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. I mean, he wasn't trying to shoot Edgeworth it, to create a witness, I guess. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Ah, oh, okay, I see. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, he falls off the boat to make it look like he dies. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat had shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. 
the boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. I mean, that's pretty good. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Oh, we're gonna get him. We're gonna get him. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Look at him there! <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go out to the lake that night? What Wright has said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, Sir! Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him, quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. Damn, that guy fucking vanished. He was like, later, peace out, homie. <laughs> I'm fucking out of here, dude. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. Search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to the trial. It's always been important! Ah. I want him and I want to know who he is. Very well. Court is adjourned. Let's go! Yo, I didn't think it was gonna be the, the, the fucking boat shop guy. I'm not gonna lie. I had no fucking inkling that it was gonna be him. December 27th, 1.22 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby number two. Yay, Nick, you did it! Yeah, well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony, still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. Phoenix, I got a feeling it's only gonna get worse. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? D did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably gonna get off the hook. You can try to smile just a little. Relax. I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right, there's something that's been troubling me for a long time now, and I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get it off my chest, but... <sighs> I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's... a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that 
I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. What? Hold on, wait a minute. Edward, you killed a guy? What do you mean to be continued? Hold on a second. What the fuck? Yo, Edgeworth killed Keith, who is the son of the boat shop owner in that elevator. And now the boat shop owner is getting revenge by trying to kill Robert Hammond, I guess, and frame Edgeworth for murder. I don't know. I'm making shit up. Anyway, this is the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you look down in the description, you'll find a link to the official store page. You can get the game for yourself if you want to do so. And if you made it this far with me, I really... Truly appreciate you being here. I hope you have a great rest of your day or your night, whatever time it is, and I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.